Well, um, welcome everyone. My name's Wayne, as Tom said, Dubbo Presbyterian Church. And um, this is just a bit of a taste of uh, the kind of stuff down the line we might do in some more online cohorts coming out of this conference. And um, it's more of just a case study of some stuff we've done in Dubbo that, that has worked and that hasn't worked. And how it'll work is I'm gonna present for 10 or 15 minutes, just download some stuff about what we've done, take notes, jot down any questions, and then the second half of the webinar um, workshop, you can just ask questions and me or one of you can answer them. Okay, so just in terms of what we mean by um, mission and funnel or pathway, can you all hear me all right? Yeah. Great. Um, so you might've heard of this kind of um, pathway of awareness or contact multiplication where people are just aware of church and then we want to connect people uh, with a person from church with a Christian they meet a Christian and then we want some kind of gospel opportunity where they hear about Jesus and then uh, become a member and so forth they're clear in the face-to-face -face world um, but what do they actually mean online so before we start I just want to sort of make sure we're talking about the same thing so when we talk about awareness of church uh, things like a Google ad or someone interacts with something on YouTube or um, they see your church on Facebook or, they, or your church turns up in a search result. They just know that you're there. And when it says YouTube, I, I'm thinking if someone pops in on your live stream and watches it for five minutes, I'm not putting that way down at grow like they've joined your online church. I think that's way back at awareness. They are, they're aware that you exist, but you don't know who they are. Then the next step, um connect is where well this is how we're defining it they make a connection with a real person and where you know who they are and it's not anonymous anymore so it might be a facebook messenger it might be a chat in a in a facebook group it might be a comment on the side of a live stream but you know who they are and they know who you are and you've started having a chat that's a connection connect that's how we're defining it conversion that's not uh, it's a funny name at the top that we're, we're called that for our conversion engine but i'm meaning they are coming to hear about Jesus. So they're hearing the gospel. So for us, the main way we do that is our intro to Jesus course, but that's like your life course, your alpha course, whatever uh, platform you've got where people can hear the gospel. Uh, and then grow is when they become a church member. So we're not defining growers there watching your online YouTube one week. This is a long way down the pathway that when they're um, joining your church and you're looking after their growth. So that's just to get some terms right serve and send we won't go into that because i'm looking at the mission side of it of the funnel uh, we call it a funnel because when you're looking at awareness there's a whole lot of people out there but the more it moves to the right the less people um, move on to the next step in terms of our philosophy in dubbo where we're sort of landing uh, you heard some of this in the session that we've just had um, if in person is up the top there so up on the top right above my head there uh, in person and online is down the bottom with awareness we're really pushing online so we want to spread the net as wide as we can online for people to know that we exist the more google apps the more facebook content uh the more good keywords on youtube for people to stumble across us by accident we see that's a great thing um, for people to become aware of us but as we move to the next step which is we want to connect with people we would prefer that that is in person so if we can get someone from a Google ad or a Facebook group to an actual physical event or physical conversation, that's our first preference. But there's some people who aren't ready for that. So that's why we do a lot of connect stuff online as well. Um, then once people have met someone from church, we would prefer them to do investigating the gospel and finding about Jesus face to face. Um, it's, it's richer. But if they can't, um, yeah, we do run our Intro to Jesus course online, although, interestingly, people who are coming from online tend to opt for the face-to-face -face one than the um, online one, which is interesting. Uh, and again, then when we get to grow, which is becoming a church member, we really want that to be part of our physical meeting. But again, there will be some people for various reasons who can't get to our meeting, um, like we were hearing about before, like... Um, uh, physical illness and so forth and so we do live stream for the people who need it but what you can see in our philosophy we have this kind of trajectory where the wider we spread the net towards awareness we're going online but the more people become 
are closer to um, our, our church family, we want that to be in person. So you might want to ask questions about that, but that's at Dubbo, the philosophy we've landed on after a couple of years of thinking through it. In terms of this pathway, um, I guess we started thinking about an online pathway a little bit in COVID when we just dumped church online like everyone had to. And I think we called it grow because we've got all these people, they're part of church, they're church members, we want them to grow. So we thought online church is grow. And probably our next step was thought, hey, we could do some Google ads and things to help people find um, our online church. Now, the problem with that is your online church watch numbers in the week might, you know, jump from 100 to 200 or whatever. But those 100 people, you don't know who they are. They're anonymous. So they're almost still back at the awareness stage because you haven't even connected with some of them yet. So um, it's interesting. We started to find we've got these people online. We don't know who they are. Um, uh, probably a next step in Dubbo was we thought we want to do some outreach online. So let's put our introduction to Jesus course online. Um, we had more success with that in COVID than we are now. Now that we're back face to face, people seem to uh, prefer the face to face version of it. And again, we ran some Facebook ads to get people to our intro to Jesus. I'll chat about that later. That kind of worked as well. But what I want to think about in this workshop is how you think more strategically about a pathway. So we, yes, we, people become aware of us through YouTube or Google or Facebook ads or whatever. What's the next best step that's a little bit more accessible than jumping online to an intro to Jesus course? What would that look like? And um, you might have already tried some things there. I'm going to share what we've come up with for Dubbo that's working really well. Then from there, we can um, invite people to our intro to Jesus course or life or whatever it is, and then to be a part of our church. So what we've stumbled across in that connect um, space, and there's, I mean, a lot of things you could do in that space, is something we started actually before COVID was our winter workshops, which is just a bunch of really small events that people can meet someone from church um, and engage. Or we also had our summer sessions, which there's an ad for a sourdough workshop over three days. And the why we came up with these was we had a big carols event. We were getting two or 300 people from the community, but we were seeing little fruit of those people coming to church or our Intro to Jesus course. So we wanted some little events to invite people from, from the carols. And so um, here's an example of a beeswax wrap night. So in the carols night, people in their bags got an invitation to 10 or 15 events. One of them is this little beeswax wrap night. We're in that over three nights because we would rather have three of 20 than one of 60 because the idea is to be small and connect. Now, um, when COVID happened, we had all these things planned for winter and COVID hit. And rather than drop it, we thought, let's move them online. It was a bit crazy, but we had a smoke your own meat workshop, which moved online and a couple, a couple of guys under the back veranda zooming how to smoke meat. We had a spit roast meat where there's a guy in his backyard uh, showing you how to set up a spit roast from Bunnings. We had homemade kombucha. We had to learn to crochet one. We actually, when someone suggested that, because we put it out to church, hey, who's got a hobby and they want to um, share it. Someone said crochet. We thought, oh no. Well, I guess we've asked for any ideas. So we put it out there. That was the most popular. We had 40 women and they met for five weeks in a row on a Monday night, just chatting together, learning to crochet, sourdough, teddy bear decorating, Thai curry, healthy sweet treats. I mean, if someone from church had a hobby, we said, let's share it. And the idea of these events is um, we didn't have a gospel talk at them, but we either interviewed someone who'd previously done our Intro to Jesus course and just asked what it was about, or we interviewed the host who was a Christian and asked how they became a Christian. So it's a very gentle introduction to what it is to be a Christian. And um, here's an example of one of the courses that I ran. It was the sourdough one, the, about 20 people there. Uh, in trying to think about what events work, the more contact, the better. So this went over three days. The first night, everyone got out their starter, which they picked up in a plastic bag. We all introduced ourselves, why we want to learn about sourdough, and then um, we mixed up our starter. So it was, it was really 50 minutes of conversation, 10 minutes of the starter. People seemed to love it. The second day, we actually mixed up the sourdough. We came back again together. That's where we did a bit of an interview about Intro to Jesus. And the third day, we actually baked our bread and that's everyone holding it up after it was baked. So after four sessions, 
you really felt like you knew those people. Um, about a third of those are from church and a third um, complete new guests from Facebook. Uh, in these um, summer sessions, we threw it out for anyone from church who had a hobby um, to run a session. And the way we had quality control is we sort of said yes to every crazy idea, but we provided the infrastructure. So we provided the advertising, we provided the registration form, we provided the MC for each end, event and we chose someone to be interviewed. Um, we provided the instructions for the host, what it's aiming for. We provided the tech if necessary, and we provided the follow-up, which is making sure they're invited to the intro to Jesus. So that was not a lot of work. Uh, if you've got 20 events coming up with the advertising for 20, it's just, you've got one and then you copy and paste. So it was sort of like a scalable platform, um, if you like, and we've been running these for four years now. Um, like we're now gearing up for our summer sessions, 2023. Um, that's on our website, it's just starting to get built. So for each, we provide the website, we provide a page for each event, we provide a registration form for each event with payment, we provide Facebook ads for each event, etc. I'll leave that there, uh, we love them. What's the outcomes, is it working? Because you don't just wanna run this stuff and um, you know get excited because it sounds good, but is it achieving what we want it to? The aim, remember, was to get people from our Christmas into smaller events and then to intro to Jesus. This year just gone, we had 255 new people, uh, so no previous contact at church, to our Christmas carols. Of those 255, 43 of them came to winter workshops. And of those 255 who 43 came to winter workshops, zero came to intro to Jesus. Very interesting. Um, but spreading the net a bit wider, of the 161 people who came to winter workshops, and some of them have come to our carols the year before or to other events, 10 people came to our Intro Jesus out of the 23 who came to it. So, uh, and when we started looking backwards, it's not like they go from one Christmas event or one Facebook ad to one winter workshop to intro. They actually spiral around for a few years and, and they sort of eventually come down the funnel slowly. So those 161 people there who came to the winter workshops, where did they come from if they didn't come from carols? 90 of them came through Facebook ads and that was a completely cold new contact. So they're not church people. Um, and so that's 90 out of 161, that's more than half of our winter workshops attenders came through Facebook ads. And that formed the 10 out of 23 of the Intro to Jesus people. So 10 of those people came through Facebook and into our winter workshop. So it seems to be working there as a middle step. Um, I'll just do a little bit of what's happening in Facebook. Uh, we do what we call a very wide ad awareness is what you click in Facebook. And it's just, are you looking to connect with other people? Good news, We've, we're inviting you to join us at DPC as we host a range of boutique events aimed at helping you connect with other people in Dubbo. So very wide. And in Facebook, we said, we wanna go for reach, that's that tick. And so we spent $63 this year and we got 24,000 uh, different views. So Dubbo's 40,000 people. So over half the people now are aware that our church is running a winter workshop for $63. Then we went down for each event and more targeted. So, you know, we'd love you to join an evening of board game fun and we go for traffic, which means we want people to click on the button and up the top there where it says the board games ad, we have only targeted that to people who like Ticket to Ride and Settlers of Catan or Dominion. So we're only, we don't wanna waste our money on people who aren't interested in board games. So we're saying, put this in front of people who like board games. So that was $34, 21 clicks. Sourdough course, we're choosing people who like organic food and sourdough. Overall this year, we spent $303 on total Facebook advertising because we didn't advertise any event. We just picked four or five of the best ones. And once you start to get people coming to a few events, Facebook says, oh, there's something happening here. And somehow they just advertise all the other ones for free for you. So um, we're discovering that if you can get Facebook a bit excited, they do the work for you. So $303 gave us 90 people to our winter workshops, 10 who came to Intro to Jesus. So if you come back to the pathway, um, in Dubbo, our little pathway that we're building is Facebook and Google awareness, so Facebook ads and Google ads, into our winter workshops, which are very small events. Some of them are only online. 
Some of them are face to face. And in fact, we've moved most of them face to face, but we're still making sure three or four are online. And then to our intro to Jesus, again, online or face to face, and then um, to become a member. And just to, to, cl to close in, we're finding that the online ads to the in person winter workshops and then to the in person intro to Jesus are the most popular. So more people want to come from a Facebook ad to a real workshop than an online one. But the second most popular is the online ad to an online winter workshop and then to the intro to Jesus in person. And the least pickup has been from an online Facebook to an online winter workshop to an online intro to Jesus. So we're giving people the choice of when you come to intro to Jesus, would you like it to be online and in person? In our last round, we had seven people choose in person, only one chose online. Um, so that's, that's interesting. It actually seems to be that people want to, as they are getting more serious in the discussions, they, they want something a bit more personal. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what we've been trying in Dubbo, uh, some of the t tools behind the thinking of it. Um, I'd love any questions. So questions about pathways, questions about the funnel, questions about Facebook, questions about other Connect stuff. Can I, can I hear you? Can you say something, Tom, so I can see if I can yeah, hear you? Yeah, you can hear us all right, Wayne. Uh, I can hear you. No one's dropped through a question just yet. Feel free to type it into the chat bar or just to unmute yourself and uh, ask Wayne whenever you want. I practiced this on my two teenage girls last night. You know, they're uh, 13 and 15 and they had a stack of questions. So you guys should have some questions. Um, Wayne, I'll get you moving. Um, so this is uh, what's unique about, not unique, but special about your situation is that it's very much a closed border. Like you say, it's 40,000. There's a very clear geographic region that you're working with. Yeah. Uh, in a way that for most people, uh, it's less clear. Does that, uh, which gives you some really neat numbers. You know, you can say 23,000 out of 40,000. Fantastic. Could you imagine this working any differently if someone was in a city and the border to where they were trying to reach was a little bit more fuzzy? Yeah, but the Facebook especially is incredible because with Facebook, you can target your advertising. So you can say, uh, target the people who like um, Barrel Woolworths or something. I don't know, like they're very specific targets. It doesn't have to just be, I think, well, you can target people who are within an area. So you can say people who are within 40 minutes or 20 kilometers or whatever it is of so you can do, I don't know, you could do people who live within five minutes of your church. Or you could target people who live within an hour of our church, but whose interest is whatever this workshop's on. That's a great one. So I think it's the principle. Think about as we run this event, uh, who would we like to reach to bring to it to hear about Jesus? And then how can we target those people? That's really helpful, Wayne. Um, the chat bar is going off. Um, so if you want to access that way, and the first one there was from Alex, Larry, hey Alex, um, he said, I missed part of the workshop, but did you already run through a decent look at the audience setup in the ads manager backend, Wayne? No, I didn't. Um, but basically when you check pick audience, first it's asking location, this will be for another seminar or our Facebook meta are offering this free at the moment. They will give you three one hour sessions. They're just trying to. Um, you know, if you're willing to spend $50 on ads, they'll talk you through it. So I think right now they're doing it for free, but so the, you want to choose your location. So we've said 40 kilometers from Dubbo, but you could say five kilometers from your church. Then you pick an age demographic, then a gender. And then this people who match anything, you can say people who've had a, a child in the last six months, people who've been married for less than 12 months. So if you're running a marriage course, people who um, are interested in almost anything. So whatever event you're running, you can pick people who match it. Um, uh, that's really all we've done. Location, age, gender, and interests. So not too sophisticated at all. That's great, Wayne, good. Um, the next one was a comment from Emma. She said, we pay for ads within our local geographical area. That's great. Mike V yeah. was asking um, just more about Dubbo Presbyterian. So what size is it? What's the staff size? And how much time has all this taken for the staff? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, so we've got uh, four-ish four staff 
church is a total of about 400. So it's sort of middle or big for country size. Um, all the Google ads and Facebook ads I've done, and it probably for the whole winter workshops takes about two hours to set them all up. So it's pretty fast. Um, the infrastructure behind running our winter workshops, the church people are doing the work. So we say, if you've got a hobby and they, if you've got a hobby, you love showing it off, they'll spend hours rigging up their little, um, uh, spit roast rig, the infrastructure behind the ads. I think the graphic design person, so she might spend a couple of days making the summer sessions thing look pretty, but once she's done it for one event, she just takes photos and copies and pastes it 10 times for the others. And then putting them on our website again, it's probably a day's worth of someone's work because they create one event and then it's copy and paste and change a few things. So um, the infrastructure for running our winter workshops online or in person seems to be about the same. Um, we grew it like we used to run big events like we, we get 100 or 110 men at a men and meet night. And we just decided, let's try scaling it back and running five or six events with less people. I feel like it's less stress and less work running lots of little events than the one big one. Anyway, that's a good question. You could build this up real easy. You could try one event, two event, four events. But I guess the main thing is not running a winter workshop, but thinking through if we have reached people online in the attract, what's the next place we can actually connect with them? I would love, are you getting many guests invited from church people to win a workshop? So that we used to only have invitations. In our last winter workshops, we only had 10 or 15 people invited by church people. So we were a bit disappointed by that. We're thinking, gee, are we losing excitement of church people inviting their friends because we're getting all these free um, Facebook people coming? So coming into summer, we're going to work harder at people inviting their friends. That was a good question. Have other people found connect things that have worked? So what have you found is a good way to meet an anonymous person online and make a connection with them? Like, have you been able to get a Facebook message chat or have you had to have some kind of an event to get them to? Like, what have you done between the attract and the gospel stage? Has anyone tried anything? Even just jumping on your live stream and saying, hi, I'm Wayne. Um, is this your first time at church? Like have people, has it, have, have anyone made contact with anonymous people on the internet and brought them into a relationship or got their details? So I think this is the hardest step online, this connect one. People love being anonymous. Um. Wayne, that's a great question. Not getting much love though. But um, just one question in the chat bar that we missed was um, from Joshua Hartog there. He said, do you run these workshops out of people's private homes, out of the church, community halls? Yeah, so if you look at um, that sourdough one there, there's me in my kitchen and there's everyone else at home in their kitchen. And the Thai cooking one, that's just someone at home on their bench running it. So um, spit roasting meat, that was someone's backyard. Kombucha, someone's kitchen. Crochet, someone's lounge room. Yeah, I don't think, none of these ones were run at the church. We have run a couple at the church. So we had one that was um, grief and suffering where we had a panel of three people thinking about cancer and suffering. We ran that from the church because it was just easier tech wise when we had a group. We did one on uh, small business startup advice and we ran that up from the church because we wanted it to look a bit schmick. But I think from someone's home into other people's homes really makes people relaxed and, and gets that contact feel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's what worked for us. Great way. Um, just to... Wayne, the Reach Australia mob are trying to close us up in two minutes. There's a couple of questions that have popped up on the bar there. So final comments and answers from you, Wayne. Curious to hear more about your Carol's event. How long have you been working at seeking to get people to connect further? Oh, every, for 10 years, we've been trying to connect people from Carol's into something else. We've tried sample bags. We've tried summer kids missions. We've tried running an intro to Jesus course straight after Carol's. But what we're doing now 
is at the carols. We are, we do present a short one minute gospel, but most of our carols night now is advertising our summer sessions. And we're interviewing people who are running events. We're interviewing someone who's running a ballroom dancing. And we're just trying to use the whole carols as a scooping for our summer sessions. And then they go home with a sample bag with all these invitations on their fridge to all the different events. And that's the best pickup we've had from that. Um, so we've just landed on it by fluke. Uh, what extent have you engaged people who have responded to your Facebook events prior to them coming to your event? A uh, big drop of the ball there. So really recently I did this. We ran some ads on Facebook to our Intro to Jesus course. We really targeted driving people to not just to our website, to click on the register button on the page. We put a, whoops, we put a pixel in our register button and we said to Facebook, drive people through our web page, through our Intro to Jesus page, through the registration, and we want people who are going to click submit. And then over a few weeks, the Google algorithm starts targeting people who will actually register. And from that, so we spent um, $70. We got five people registered for Intro to Jesus. We thought, you ripper, this is great. Um, only one of them, so they registered, they put in the email, they said they were coming, only one of them turned up. And that was a week and a half later. And we didn't engage them between. And I just thought, oh dear. So they've said they'll register. We said, great, see you. And a week and a half online is a long time. And they, I don't know, Facebook hit them when they were weak. They signed up a week later, they regretted it, they didn't show. So we should have said the next day, thanks for coming. And we should have sent them a video of a testimony. And we could have said, looking forward to you coming. So we com we completely dropped the ball. You, yeah, you, I think uh, someone signing up online, you've got to get back to them that night with a personal contact. And then the next day, because they're a week later, uh, I think they've almost forgotten about it. Good question. That's, that's really good, Wayne. I'm getting the hurry up that we need to move across to our strand two, to our second okay. workshop. I'm just putting Wayne's email in the chat bar so that you can yep. follow him up if you'd like to do that. It's pretty cool, Wayne at Dubbo.org. But I'm Dubbo going to call this one up and open up strand two. Everyone, you guys get to choose what you want to do for your second workshop. See you later. See you, everyone.